Once the country started to wake up to the giant man-made lead poisoning disaster in Flint, Michigan, one of the first dramatic things we learned about what would become the response to Flint was that the U.S. attorney was investigating a federal prosecutor's investigation into how Flint's water got poisoned. We knew that was happening as of the first week in January. We didn't know if it was a criminal or civil investigation. Today we find out it's a criminal investigation. Today we find out the FBI is involved. An FBI spokeswoman in Detroit says, quote, we've been investigating it for a while. And now everybody's wanting to investigate, including something a little sketchy <laughs> in terms of an investigative uh, the, the overture, I guess we could call it, from Congress. Tomorrow there's going to be the first congressional hearing on the Flint water crisis, but it is not without controversy. Uh, Congress is going to hear from some of the people involved in this story, but they are not going to hear from the main people involved in it. Uh, the Republican committee leaders did not, for example, invite Governor Rick Snyder to testify. Today we also learned that EPA whistleblower Miguel Del Toro will not be there. We also learned that former Flint emergency manager Darnell Early is refusing to appear, although there may be some late breaking news on that tonight. In terms of this hearing tomorrow, here's how the ranking Democrat on the House Oversight Committee, Elijah Dick Cummings, is describing tomorrow's event. Quote, at Wednesday's hearing, we won't hear from the governor, from any of the emergency managers he appointed in Flint, or from anyone else in the state who was involved in making decisions that led to this crisis. He went on to call the hearing, quote, a partisan effort to protect the governor and others who bought, brought about this crisis. Joining us now is one man who will be testifying at tomorrow's hearing, Congressman Dan Kildee of Flint, Michigan. Uh, Congressman, I know you've been working like you can't believe on this story. Thank you so much for being with us again. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Rachel. Um, I, I want to start by asking you, I mentioned there might be some breaking news about this congressional hearing tonight. Uh, we have seen it reported this hour that the Flint emergency manager, one of the people who was directly involved in this decision that did poison the water in Flint, uh, he's being subpoenaed now to testify tomorrow on Capitol Hill. Uh, do you know anything about that? Do you know what's likely to happen there? No, I did talk to Chairman uh, Chaffetz on the floor of the House during a vote series today, and he did indicate that he would be subpoenaing uh, uh, Mr. Early. And I think they were embarrassed. They had invited him, he had accepted, and then maybe began to understand the gravity of what was about to take place and then withdrew. Uh, and I think the, the committee chair was quite irritated by that, so they did issue a subpoena. Whether or not he'll appear uh, is doubtful, at least based on some reports that I've just seen. We have, been, you know, he we have been hearing that, that he and his lawyer are refusing to be served with that subpoena tonight. Obviously, anybody has the right uh, to plead the fifth, um, for example, in, in, in a case like this. But um, there's, there's questions that have been raised, particularly by Ranking Member Cummings, that the committee isn't really trying to get to the bottom of this, that they're not being aggressive at investigating, that they want to make this an Obama administration scandal instead of really figuring out what happened in Flint. Uh, does, that, does this issue with the subpoena tonight change your mind at all uh, about the overall direction of the the committee here and, and what Congress is trying to learn? Not really, because if they really wanted to get answers, they would, they would ask the governor to come. He's the one person who's in a position to know exactly what happened, to answer the questions. He pledged, as you know, complete transparency. Uh, this doesn't look much like transparency. But the committee hearing, I'll testify because I asked to tell Flint's story before the committee hears from other witnesses. But, uh, you know, I think everything communicates. And I think the, the hearing is important because the Congress and those watching will see uh, exactly how transparent the Snyder administration is being about this, not at all. And they'll also see that I think members of Congress who really should be discharging their duties protecting children in Flint, some of them may be more interested in the career of Governor Snyder mm. than the career choices that these kids are going to have. Congressman, we also got word today that the FBI is part of the investigation into uh, why this happened and how this happened in Flint. We'd heard uh, last month that the U.S. attorney was looking into it. It looks now like it is a broader investigation uh, with the FBI on the case as well. Is that heartening to you? Do you have any expectations there in terms of the federal investigation? Well, I'm very happy that it's happening, mainly because the individuals who did this to the people that I represent, to people in my hometown, need to be personally held accountable. And I hope and I believe that the facts will lead the investigation wherever it goes, and those uh, people who did wrong to the people of Flint will have to stand for that and explain what they did and will be judged accordingly.
I am concerned, however, that with all the attention on individual accountability, that we will somehow lose the responsibility, the moral obligation that the state of Michigan has to make it right for the people of Flint. Yep. As, you, as you showed, Mayor Weaver is asking for those lead service lines to be replaced. The state of Michigan should write a check to the city of Flint for $60 million to get that done, and they should do it tomorrow. I know we're working to get federal help, but frankly, the governor's out of excuses. He's sitting on a billion dollars, big tax cuts for the wealthiest people in the state of Michigan, and Flint has water that they can't drink, and he's not doing anything about it. That's just wrong. Congressman Dan Kildee uh, of Flint, Michigan, who's been really aggressive on this uh, issue in, in every possible way for the folks in his district. Congressman, I know we'll have you back soon on this. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks. All right, we got much more ahead. Stay with us. Hey, YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russert. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.